Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an exact sweep trick generator model 500 SL. And by the way, if you want to try and Google this and try and find manual schematics and all that kind of stuff, it's just impossible. And the big, big problem is there is a Mercedes that is also called 500 SL. And I think this clocks up all my Google hits. <laughs> it's impossible. So if anybody got a manual and a or a schematic or something like that uh, about this uh, fantastic model here, could you please post a link uh, in such a way I can uh, understand it in the comments? Yeah, yeah, I know you can't paste in real full links, but maybe you could remove some of the little thingies in the front so it will still work, right? So this um, sweep generator here is a little bit special, by the way. It goes from 1 uh, hertz to 1 megahertz. And uh, look at the start frequency settings. See? 1 to 5. What if you want to start at 6 or 7 or 8? That is impossible. Uh, at least so far when I look at this style, right? Um, these, they jump in tens. Here they start uh, the range, right? So I think this is a little bit weird. I think I see all the stuff that I want to find run. We also got some run and start and stuff like that here. Can gate it manually. And all this sweep stuff here. Uh, this time and the stop frequency. This is just the output panel, uh, DC offset amplitude, and we got four different uh, waveforms. Uh, we got a low and a high output. I think this is at factor 10 more. And um, yeah, look at the look at the on off switch here. It's really, really close. See, it's barely touching. Isn't that funny? See, if I push this up, it's probably going to hit. <laughs> Fantastic design, right? Yeah, and uh, if we look here at the back, we of course got all the fantastic things that you would expect from a sweep generator. We got the voltage um, control input, and uh, we got a uh, voltage frequency output, the sweep output, trick input, and synchronization output. Obviously, uh, you can connect a, a plotter, XY plotters. I've already released quite a lot of videos about XY plotters. And that was how you did it back in the 80s and 90s. You would use an XY plotter and then you would sweep something. And then you could uh, draw all your fantastic curves of whatever stuff that would have been frequency um, dependent. But today we can, of course, just uh, use an oscilloscope and record everything super, super fast and easy. But digital storage scopes, well, they didn't really have this kind of thing. I think I will open this first and inspect the internal before I power this up. I think this is the way to get in. Um, yeah, I don't see a lot of other ways it could be so it must be those screws right and then we got some loose top and a loose bottom that was super easy to get in look at that beautiful beautiful design everything here is just perfectly well organized of course it is op amp based because this one is from 1981 here we got a Negative 12 and a positive 12, just the classic 78 and 79 regulators. Capacitors, they pass my visual inspection, so I think I'm ready for the next step. I just wanted to check a little bit around here what we got, and I think this is the output stage, and that will be the final output stage. We've got some emitter biasing resistors and all that kind of stuff. So everything here is just a, a normal 
output transistor stage. Of course, this one go um, from one hertz to one megahertz. So it's, of course, uh, DC. Everything here is DC coupled and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we got some really uh, nice op amps and they're all uh, marked with 81. These and these and so on, right? And uh, yeah, also, I think, yeah, the ICs. Look at those fantastic film capacitors for the different uh, frequency ranges. So far, so good. Everything here looks uh, normal. And uh, of course, we've got some really nice shadow switches and all that kind of stuff. I want to show you, yeah, the back side as well. I believe this is a uh, mains entry, and this is how you connect it for uh, Euro power. So by connecting these two together, we go into 230 volt uh, mode. So the circuit board is also really, really nice and uh, beautiful. Look at that. Right there, it says 41681. So that is how it is. This proves that design is from 81. A lot of good things was made in 81, yeah? Oh, yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was it. Like, oh, you gotta be quiet. You're ruining my video. God damn it. Oh, yeah, I wanna show you something down here. So, this is the mains switch. And uh, let's try and zoom in on this metal part here of the mains switch. I don't know if I can get some light in there. But look at that. This metal part here is full of nasty, nasty tin whiskers. Look at that. Full of hair. I really don't like tin whiskers, and especially not in mains switches and stuff like that. So it's probably all the way inside this switch as well but this unit is only from 81 and i normally see tin whiskers on stuff that is a lot older i can't really remember i have seen tin whiskers of on i mean such new equipment like this before so i think this is a new record it could be it's been stored Somewhere a uh, high humidity or temperature or uh, I don't know really what make this But it's it's really bad. It's all the way in here, and it's they're always impossible to video But that's just how it is the rest of this looks absolutely gorgeous nice and clean circuit board layout and Maybe they're using this case for a lot of other products because look at the circuit board holders here and the side so you just slide everything in here and you know, i mean super fast just to screw the back panel on here and i mean it's, this is a nice case you could really assemble this nice and easy super fast yeah and, and you see also the regulators they're located like that so you could easily just Screw them on here, and this is screwed on there, and then you can take out the circuit board and do some testings and all that without, you know, jamming around with wires and all that. You, you see here, only one little wire here, and the rest is, it's, it's really not that uh, bad or complicated. We have seen a lot of other brands, like, full of wires and full of components all over the place, and it's a nightmare to manufacture stuff like that. Yeah, a little bit of handwriting and stamps all over the place <laughs> it's always hey this is number 17 let's try and do the first uh, power on first of all plug in mains and see if there is any leak so that's not the case let's try and look at that hallelujah we got a lot of oh my god that is a lot So, like that, we got a nice sine wave, and uh, 
let's turn off this annoying display. So, uh, what have I done here? I've put my start frequency for 1, and I am in 1 kilohertz. So, so far so good, right? I didn't start any sweeps. Let's try and dial this up to 5 and see if, yes, that is 5 kilohertz. And then it can, of course, do 6. So here's my next funny thing. If I dial this to 10 kilohertz and go down to 1, here is, oh, that is weird. Okay, 10 kilohertz, and I put it for 1. Ah, I can go under all the way down. Oh, it goes all the way to so 0. Are you kidding me? So if I go into 1 kilohertz again, look at that. So that is 1 kilohertz also on the dial. And then I can go down, 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 down. Okay, fantastic. So it is not a big problem. There's a huge overlap. I just can't go real high overlap, only 6. But I can go super much below the number 1. Look at that. I can actually go down to... Okay, let's look at that. So this is uh, 6 hertz. I mean, there's a huge gain in the first few millimeters of that one. But if I put it to the first line, we've got 500 hertz. All right. So far, so good. We are happy about all that. Let me put it for one. And let's try all this sweepity sweep thing. So I don't know if we can see what is going on here on the on the text here. So sweep is in stop. I will hit run. Yes. So stop frequency is at max. Sweep time is at max. Let's try and dial with the sweep time. No, no luck. Ah, uh, now it is this. So this is my stop frequency, and I have also. Ah, oh, look at that! Now you're doing your thing. So that is sweep time. Ooh. Doobity doobity doobity. Sweepity sweepity. Look at that. Boing boing is what it's saying, right? And so that is the stop frequency here. I can say how much I want to stop it. It could be fun to put in a little speaker here and see if we can make a little boing boing thing. And then you have run, you have gate, because there's an, a, a trick input main, I don't know, what is that for? Lock scale is also possible. And then it goes, of course, in logarithmic, super duper. But anyway, this fantastic thing is working. And if we stop this run, let's look at the waveforms. So that is the same, probably another phase or something like that, right? Triangle, hello, works too. And a square wave. And the amplitude is, oh, this potentiometer needs a little bit of cleaning, huh? DC offset, yep, all that works fine. Did I mention, um, this thing uses 13 watts uh, from the mains input, so it's not that bad. I'll let it run a little bit and see if it gets nice and warm or something. Like that. That's perfectly fine so You are far. going to love this. Okay, if you're not ready, I mean, uh, I think you should now is a good time to uh, put one of your fingers on your volume potentiometer okay because i'm going to show you how this thing sounds okay so if you cannot do that i mean <laughs> you should probably turn it off now you are now um i mean warned you have been warned okay so let's crank up
yeah, yeah, okay. Funny, funny shit, let's turn this off. <laughs> okay, so that was a lot of funky, funky stuff, and just using one um, signal generator like that. Wow, fantastic. What else can we use this for? Okay, I think that is more or less all I wanted to show you guys. I just wanted to make this real fast and shiny because I don't have any schematics or anything else really um, cool to show you guys. So thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Like and subscribe and all that blah, blah, blah.